offer a platform and with this I mean technical platform but I also mean everything that is around this technical platform um, that that others can build on yeah? so that we can that we offer technology and an infrastructure around it like an open source community like people who who, who are interested in this topic who have done research uh, and to offer this for others to build up build upon so I think this would for me would be the main and most important offering that we could make because then we could allow other people to to make use of, of the research that has been done and um, yeah on the of the research but also of the technology that has been created so I think this would be but I think we are still far away from that so uh, uh, we, are, we are looking much into the future I think there I, can, I think we have to think uh, offering this to my mind I know it's a word we've made up because it doesn't really exist in the English language in a plural sense uh, but in my mind it's a change in our thinking and it's a change in our thinking to look at what we're doing look at what we're developing and look how others might use that and might be engaged in it so one of the ones I'm interested in is the idea of a design library uh, and I was just talking with a friend of mine who owns a software company in the Netherlands, in Utrecht. Uh, and I would say, and he is interested in the Layers project. And he said, that sounds really good. Uh, he said, I'd love to do some work with you. How can I get involved? And I said, oh my God, we're saying we're an open project, but how can he get involved? And uh, we got talking some more. Uh, and he said to me that one of the problems is, he said, uh, we can develop apps re relatively quickly. Uh, but there's a real problem in we don't, haven't got the use cases, we haven't got the access to the end users, we haven't got the wireframe designs, and it's going to take me a lot of time to develop those relationships myself. We can program fast, and he said what you're doing sounds really exciting. So, so that's where we get the idea of the Open Design Library, that developers could come and get access to those use cases, get access to those wireframes, take them away and use them. I mean, another of the offerings, which is, I suppose, related to it, is that we've been working with groups of students, uh, uh, and especially on ICT courses or ICT and business courses now, uh, and software engineering courses, it's more or less a requirement that they will spend in some semester work as a team, working for an outside client, working as a virtual company themselves and producing something real. Uh, and very often they struggle to find clients to work for, bizarrely. I mean, they're offering to work for free. Okay, they're students, they will be different, they will bring different skills, there'll be a different levels of ability, but they're quite often struggling. And so we've been working with the Fachhochschule in Karlsruhe over the last term, and they have produced us, so I haven't got my phone on me, they have produced us a fabulous app, which is called Reflect, which they programmed using Scrum programming within, I think it took eight weeks from beginning to end, and that's ready to go gold now, and we'll be rolling that out over the summer. So that's another idea of offering, so we've just got to use our brain, think outwards, think open. If there's anything to say, we should be thinking all stages of the project outwards and open, which is why I like the idea that you're making these videos. Layers will offer best practice ex uh, examples. They will, for instance, to clusters and network, they will uh, deliver lists of uh, services they offer to members, how, who the services target, how the business models are, how the cluster organization or the network uh, acquires the value of the service from their members so that the members actually fund the collaborative uh, cluster organization or network organization? Um, I think there are a large number of offerings that layers could provide to healthcare. Uh, the most obvious ones are learning technology tools that the project develops that they can actually pick up and use as individual healthcare professionals and also as the organizations. Um, but I don't think that's the only offerings that we have. We are also, I hope, going to be able to give people guidance on how to use other tools. 
not tools that have been developed by um, learning layers, but tools that we have looked at and understand how those tools can actually bring real improvements to small organisations when used effectively. And we could be running workshops with small organisations to help them understand the potential of new technology and how it can support learning. Um, I think we also have the opportunity to um, make offerings to other developers where we are coming up with lots of design ideas through our work with the GP practices, lots of different ways in which technology could support their work. And as a project, we will, we will not be able to follow up all of those ideas ourselves, but what we can potentially do is share these ideas um, based on actual real rich understanding of the user's context and then share those design ideas with developers who are able to take them further. Um, potentially also we have uh, in healthcare there are um, key bits of software that our healthcare professionals already use on a daily basis. And it may be that we can work with the make offerings to the companies that develop those pieces of software to see whether learning layers, understanding and um, technologies can enhance what they already are providing to the healthcare professionals. So um, one thing was, is definitely the tool area. So I think in the end we will have a collection of tools uh, from which you can choose what actually suits to your own environment. So we will not create a, a single big monolithic system uh, that you can either fits to your context or it doesn't, but it will rather create a toolbox of different things that you can adapt to your own context and where you can reinvent how your informal learning actually takes place in your own organization. And I think that's the second part would be, uh, which is equally important, that layers will also work on concepts that allow to um, structure informal learning, to support informal learning in a better way, so that uh, it's not only about uh, using a special tool, but creating a different attitude towards um, informal learning, learning how to um, actually become an expert informal learner. So I think that will be a second contribution from a methodology and concept point of view. I now start out with the more technological offerings that I would see. You know, I think that uh, one thing that you could expect from layers is that we come up with um, mathematical, algorithmical um, or model-oriented innovation in terms of a software. You know, like kind of the conceptual part of it and the software part of it. Meaning open source software components that we, we might want to offer. Um, to the, the wider community. Second one is conceptual offerings, which means a concept how to solve um, some of the issues that are there out there that we identified as important um, and that we deem are relevant not only for a couple of individual users, but for many users. I mean, this is kind of differentiation, differentiating factor that I see in, in layers that um, we're focused on problems and issues and challenges and opportunities um, to, to be created for a wider community of organizations and institutions and people working together. So that's the second part of, of an offering and of course we will also offer, I think, expanded or new theories. So offering theories to the academic community is also something that I think is relevant. And the fourth one would be um, that we offer actual experience, you know. In a, in, a, in, a, in a good format. Like I could envision, for example, a couple of videos that actually explain the most important lessons learned or best practices that we identified in layers. And I think, you know, this approach already that we, that actually you, Pablo, you're, you know, to be credited for this, uh, brought into the project of trying to collect the material that we got already in order to connect with, out with the wider community. Uh, I think this is a, a special offering and we can methodologically actually um, also offer support or coaching about how to do that for EU-funded research projects. For me, a big offer will be uh, when we, uh, the vision I've had from the beginning, uh, when we wrote the, the, the description of work, is to have a tool that helps people build up their um, personal learning networks 
uh, which is like how you've got to start making contact with people, you start building this network to answer, answer questions when you've got a problem, you've got to maintain it, then activate it for learning. You've got to do that, and that's a personal network, and you've got to trust the people in it. We're going to assist people doing that, having apps and tools to do that. And then it's, and then you get bigger. You want to go out into the... what It may be that you need to go out into the wider community to get more information so that you get this kind of link out of a, of a GP practice to other people and you share information, which is... I, a bit idealistic in a way, people are so busy, but we want tools to do that. So that's what I'm calling a, a, um, a profession, professional learning network. So there's your personal learning network, your professional learning network, and there'll be tools and apps that we will offer to do that by the end of the project. Okay, so the offerings of layers, you can also see that from uh, this um, community uh, perspective. Yeah, So there are offerings for developers, Yeah, so we will set up an open uh, development process, we will set up open design processes, so to involve uh, people which are uh, uh, helping us to develop uh, and engineer uh, these informal learning solutions. And from the user perspective, yeah, so I think uh, layers will give them a voice yeah, to raise their needs, to uh, uh, raise their expectations yeah, and to get into and uh, hopefully po very productive dialogue with, with uh, people which are um, willing and able to uh, create um, infrastructures and tools which are fulfilling the needs and requirements of the users in the different professions. And I think just sh having research which shows that people are actively learning in the workplace trying to improve the care, I think is, is useful. I think the next level is actually how do you actually scaffold that learning so it becomes even more meaningful. I think that's a challenge. And I think for me, we may find that's technology, but in fact, the more I think about this, is actually, it's not about technology, it's about organizational change. And probably what we're doing is actually understanding the complexity of how organisations can work effectively and to learn effectively. And probably that's the greatest aspect because technology, even if we create the tools, it will only be part of the learning process. Something that people come to be more aware of, of working practices and, and how different kind of learning occurs there. And the other one is to change practices that we can offer different kind of other practices and then of course there, there should be some tools and artifacts that are something that make things easier, better, nicer, more comfortable. To develop something that's helpful for the ordinary, not so highly sophisticated, studied, ex experienced or literate, uh, internet literate person. So there also need, need to be um, an offer for those who are in the learning process of using technologies. For me, the offer, because maybe because of working in a technological company, my view is that the, um, the offerings will be um, te technical solutions to everyday problems. So they will help a worker um, deal with that information in a way that is logical for them, is easy, um, makes them feel part of the modern world, um, helps them improve their working day. So um, the offering will be, you know, we'll start off offering that to people who work in the medical area or in construction, maybe as part of their training, um, as well as their everyday working practices. And then that can be offered to other w workers in other sectors. So I think that um, in terms of scaling up, we will have a lot of, you know, useful, um, um, flexible technological solutions that will help people across a lot of different sectors and working areas. Uh, a service concept emerging that uh, we, are, we are involving university study groups and seminars for problem and practice based learning. That is one side when they, they, some of them are developing ready, ready to implement uh, applications. Some are uh, 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 developing plans how to, uh, how to digitalize uh, uh, continuing training processes uh, in the construction sector. Uh, we are getting more of this stuff. One of the things, interestingly, 
these co-design workshop uh, processes can be also developed into offerings for cluster activities elsewhere. So uh, uh, we are only getting there to understand what kind of gallery of offerings we are getting. Social and semantic relations are getting more and more, yeah, are gaining more and more, um, I would say, importance. Yeah, um, as we see it, a lot of people are using social media and social networks, and also in research, there's still a need for semantic relations and so on. And um, but um, as I see it now, there is no free software available, which allows you, for instance, yeah, to, to create a social semantic network yeah? and to build all, uh, up your own Facebook, for instance, yeah? to use it in your uh, company and so on. Yeah? And I think it's, it, it's a nice idea uh, with the social semantic server yeah? to, to come up with an open so uh, source software, which uh, could be easily uh, installed uh, in a company, for instance, yeah? and we also have all these different kind of use cases and all these different kind of services uh, we can provide to the user, uh, like tagging, like rating, like recommendations, uh, uploading stuff, uh, seeing what kind of relations the people have, the semantic relations, etc. Uh, and uh, also the scaffolding approaches we are approaching in the future. So. Um, uh, Based on this, yeah, we have a lot of services in the end, we hope so, to have a lot of services in the end that uh, can be then used uh, also for other companies. Uh, I think we layers won't offer just one single thing, I think it will offer a broad, broad area because there is so much happening in the project. Um, obviously from a technical point of view, I think at the end of the four year period we will have a number of techno technological research projects that the partners have done. Uh, which we can actively promote and we can push, like I say, push the boundaries of mobile technology. Um, and I think it will, Layers will introduce a framework, it will introduce a platform for future projects perhaps that want to pick up where Layers ends or what, where it finishes and, and progress it further because I don't think, although we have a four year period, I think it, there's enough research in this that will take it beyond four years. Uh, so I think the project will live beyond um, just its initial period. We will end up with actual tools that we will be using on a daily basis to increase the knowledge and use of information for me as an individual, but more importantly for me with a team that works together to deliver the care. With taking relevant data with the question, but leaving behind all the personal data, so that uh, when the question is posed or the problem is posed to the peer group, uh, it would be purely about, let's say, an anonymous clinical issue and not about the patient. So, so I don't know exactly how to solve that. Uh, that would be an important thing.